Thousands die every day from tuberculosis. Which is why I'll be addressing this issue today. I chose to address this issue of infectious diseases today because I want to see exactly how big of a problem this is in our society. Which, by the way, is the leading cause of disability across the globe and the third main cause of death in the United States. Measles, tuberculosis, and cholera are responsible for 63% of all childhood deaths, not to mention it being the cause of 48% of all premature deaths. We're talking about unborn babies here. Although every single country or continent does contain infectious diseases to some degree, Africa has had the hardest hit of them all, being deemed the infectious continent with the most known infectious diseases and the rate, highest rate of deaths compared to other continents, Africa has contributed over 20 new infectious diseases to our world since the mid-1970s. Locals in Africa are severely affecting the international spread of infectious diseases due to the fact that lots of locals in Africa are in possession of unhygienic conditions, which you know really heightens the risk of epidemics. Unreasonable policy changes, such as the one where a decision was made to stop immunization in Nigeria, which led to the re-emergence of polio, is certainly one of the most irrational reasons why locals in Africa are getting the blunt end of this whole epidemic. Some important statistics that should be enlightened upon civilians is that tuberculosis, which is the infectious disease I'll be talking about today, is amongst the top 10 causes of deaths worldwide. And just two years ago, Huh. 10.4 million people fell ill with the disease whilst 1.7 million people died due to tuberculosis. Without surprise, HIV positive people are most prone to developing tuberculosis due to their failed immune system. Approximately 40% of the deaths that happened in 2016 due to tuberculosis were HIV positive people. So let's talk tuberculosis. Like any other disease, the cause for the spread of tuberculosis is through the actual air itself. A person with tuberculosis may cough or sneeze, and another individual inhales the expelled droplets. That results in them possibly contracting tuberculosis. But don't be alarmed! It's only contractable if you're with someone with tuberculosis for a prolonged period of time. For example, if you live with them. So as long as you don't live with your tuberculosis infected brother, sister, mom, or dad, or grandpa, or grandma, or uncle, or... You should be fine. However, more and more people are being forced into poverty, where poor nutrition and crowded conditions lead to the spread of tuberculosis. The disease risk will be compounded. And finally, the last way tuberculosis can enter your body is through contaminated foods that contain bacteria such as E. coli. This enters your body, therefore trig oh, tr tr oh, triggering tuberculosis in your body. Now you're probably wondering, Josh, how do we solve this though? Well, my first proposed solution is through the BCG vaccination, which is a vaccination that essentially stops the patient from contracting tuberculosis. Now, UNICEF is essentially the main provider for this vaccination, and the money usually comes from donations across the globe. So, donating a couple dollars per person could essentially save this entire epidemic. My second proposed solution for this epidemic is face masks. Now, even though you might know what face masks do, you might still be asking the question, But Josh, how will face mask magically solve tuberculosis? Well, when a face mask is worn by an individual diagnosed with tuberculosis, it can potentially aid with the actual spread of the infection itself. 
What the face mask does is that it captures the most significant wet particles around the mouth and nose region, therefore preventing a greater spread of bacteria around the patient's surrounding environment. And finally, what you guys have been waiting for for the five minutes this video has been playing. My final solution. It's another vaccination. But, however, this is a cheaper alternative to the BCG vaccination I was talking about earlier. It may be less effective, but it is much cheaper. An inexpensive drug called isoniazid is offered to those who are exposed to this disease, who will then take the drug, and within 12 months, they will have a 30 to 100% immunization to tuberculosis. So those are all my solutions, and actually all I have to offer on the topic of tuberculosis. I'd like to thank you guys for sticking around for the duration of this video, and peace out. Uh, yeah, I confess, father, I confess, cause I've been living wrong.